Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to Star Citizen. The recent Forbes article that caused quite a stir among not only the Star Citizen and gaming community, but also the wider internet. And this will likely hit another wave of attention with the print release of Star Citizen article in the Forbes magazine on the 31st of May, which has an approximate international circulation of around 7.7 .7 million readers. That's a lot of attention. The result of the article has been a huge number of diverse angles, opinions and thoughts on the subject, and for that reason I wanted to take a look at some of the reactions here in this video. Now I don't want to focus too much on the article itself, as I've already done that in a previous video, however there are a few things that I want to mention, so I will focus on this for just a few minutes, please bear with me. As I said before, I do believe that the article was pretty well written and well researched. Much of this information will be new to those who haven't been paying close attention to Star Citizen over the years. That said, there was very little new information for those who have been paying attention. After all, it has been covered in recent years. I'd also like to point out that the article did clearly have a negative bias towards the project, one which a lot of people clearly didn't agree with. However, as with any other published article based upon claimed facts, those facts should certainly have been signed off by Forbes legal reps and cleared for publication. So at the end of the day, facts really are facts, but these were spun in a slightly negative bias, and bottom line here, it was pretty harsh to have included the personal life stuff as well. The reaction to the article has led to a few misconceptions though, many of which I saw all over the internet. One of these was that the article was just an opinion piece or a random blog. Both of these are entirely incorrect. The article was written by Forbes staff and an informative piece rather than an opinion piece. Another misconception has been the number of people pointing out that the Forbes article got the total funding of $300 million incorrect. However, a brief check of figures released by CIG show that totals of $300 million appear to be correct. And here's the breakdown, do let me know if I'm wrong on this. Another common opinion was that the article writer clearly didn't understand the game. And the reality of this is that the article wasn't about the game itself, but about the business practices and funding. In this specific case, Forbes were not interested in talking about the aims, goals and achievements of the game itself, rather the focus was on the business, and this makes sense, as, as uh, Forbes is a business-focused magazine. It's also worth mentioning that Forbes have, of course, focused on the positive aspects of Star Citizen in the past, and this as recently as December 2018. But even in the recent piece, they did confirm that Star Citizen is not fraud. Now, I could go on with this side of things, but as I've already said, I don't want to focus on this too much. So, uh, with that out of the way, let's move on. Now, the general fallout from the Forbes piece ranges from tepid to heated. Many from the gaming press picked up on this, including VG247, GameIndustry.biz, and GameStar. In these cases, they were pretty much passing on the same information that Forbes had already covered. Other websites, such as NAG, were extremely hard and arguably unfair. PC Gamer were notable by their absence, however, this could well be down to the fact that, as already mentioned, the information in the Forbes piece was not new. Naturally, dozens of content creators picked up on the Forbes topic on YouTube, with perhaps the best and most reasonable video coming from the Quartering channel. This, of course, is linked in the video description. There were also many other videos from non-Star Citizen channels, and these ranged from neurotic to balanced. Star Citizen content creators, meanwhile, had their own take on things, and here, things slid a bit more towards focusing on the game itself, which again, wasn't really the focus of the Forbes article. But nonetheless, that misinterpretation by some people is entirely understandable. As an example, a common observation among these videos was that the Forbes article was unfair because, as a game, Star Citizen is making progress. And really, that cannot be argued. Anyone saying that work isn't being done on the game is being entirely unreasonable, or else not paying attention. CIG keep active, up-to-date roadmaps on all current and future content. They release vast amounts of information giving insight on the current development. For many people who heavily follow the project, they will know the current state of the game at any given moment. But it's also fair to point out that delays do happen on a regular basis, whilst the roadmap has constant changes. Meanwhile, Star Citizen still does not have a release date. In short, for the most part, 
the response from the majority of Star Citizen based video content creators was to focus on the game itself, something that clearly wasn't Forbes aim. Now for me, the whole situation is very interesting, precisely because Star Citizen is a project of unprecedented promised scope. The concept of the game is vastly beyond what has been attempted before, there's no doubt about that. And for that reason alone, it's understandable that the media and individuals alike question the feasibility of the project. And then if you add nearly one third of a billion dollars into the equation, which on average is roughly three years of SpaceX operating costs between 2002 and 2012, and no one should be surprised that this garners widespread attention. Bottom line then, attention from mainstream sources outside of gaming circles shouldn't be unexpected, or ultimately, it shouldn't really be criticized. The American Bar Association, clearly a non-gaming entity, found the business model of interest, and when the Forbes article hits the newsstand with the printed edition later this month, it's entirely possible that other mainstream sources will pick up on the project as well. Meanwhile, Star Citizen will continue moving forwards, and like any and all other games, it will be judged on the merits of its content releases. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.